even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Yeah. That one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream. Welcome back to the Criss Cross Corner. I'm your host, Chris Canty, and we have our co-host, Mark Simpson. And before we begin, shout out to all the members of the Criss Cross Corner Podcast Facebook group. Shout out. And shout out to all of the people in the Criss Cross crew on Patreon. Woo! Support the podcast. Y'all supporting the podcast. Y'all are amazing. All, you know, it's all all 13 of y'all. It's still 13 13. patrons. Trying to get to 50. Trying to get to 50. Trying to get to 50. 50 Patreons. Patrons, not Patreons. 50 patrons on Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. But uh, support the podcast on Patreon. $5 a month. Five. Only $5. We'll get you Crisscross Corner and everything else Crisscross Studios, like Crisscross mm-hmm. Playlist, the Guess That Song Challenge, Crisscross Adventures. Which we were supposed to do the challenge yesterday. Yeah, but I, I kind of took uh, three melatonin and I kind of out. But it's okay. Um, I'm alive and we're going to do this episode today <laughs> on uh, MLK Day. Happy MLK Day, Mark. Happy MLK Day. Um, happy MLK to all of you watching this podcast or listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, or anywhere you find your podcast. As members of the Facebook group, You get to request topics for us to talk about and topics for us to talk about on our top 10 list of the week. You also get to argue points. Like, this should have been number one, Chris. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care. I'm still going to make my top 10 list and you're going to like it. (laughs) We're trolling over here. That's what we do. We like to troll people. (laughs) Waffle House. (laughs) Right. All right. We're not going to talk about Waffle House no more. Let's get into our first. Let's get to our first book. So we're going to talk about uh, what you do in Detroit. So, a Detroit-based company has been selected for demolition of over thirteen hundred delight not delighted blighted buildings. That's a thirty million dollar deal. It's a lot of buildings. A lot of buildings still need to be torn down in Detroit. So. Mm-hmm. Whew. 1300. Mostly, mostly east side. Mm. Yeah, mostly mostly where Mark used to live, but uh, I'll, play, I'll play. You don't claim that part. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving with Mark. I was like, this is a nice neighborhood. We turned down one street. Yeah, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what is going on in Detroit? That's the sad reality I live in. Yeah, I'm like, yo. Lived. <laughs> Lived. Yeah. Mark lives in Romulus now. So now he's you know, he's not safe at all. All the East Side niggas moved out there. So <laughs> <laughs> no, all the East Side niggas moved moved to the west side. I moved to Dearborn in freaking uh, Southfield. No, they, they don't allow people in Dearborn. They're still the same Dearborn. Southfield. Mm-mm. No, the West Side niggas moved to moved to Southfield. The East Side <laughs> people moved to Romulus. <laughs> Or Macomb Township. Roseville. Roseville. Did you see that one video of that one East white Point. lady? The one Point. white lady in East Point? She was just sitting on her porch. She hit some That's another gunshots. What's up Detroit moment. That's another What's Up Detroit moment. She was like, pop, pop, pop. So, oh, shit. This lady sitting on her porch at 1.30 in the morning. In the wintertime. Yeah. 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 
It wasn't that cold. Road. It wasn't that cold. But she's a car comes down the street and she heard gunshots. She nearly slipped trying to get through the door. <laughs> she was like, what, 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 what? <laughs> trying to get through the door. <laughs> She said she thought it was fireworks until she heard it three or four times. I'm like, really? Fireworks in East Point? At 1 30 in the morning? In January. Oh my gosh. Anyway. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the Detroit Lions select a new general manager, Brad Holmes. They chose I don't know. Him. What? Yeah, they chose They picked him already? They picked a general manager, and now the general manager has to choose the coach. Who who did they pick for the general manager? Brad Holmes. Give me more background on this guy. I forgot where he's from. I don't care where he's from. He's still not going to do shit for Detroit. <laughs> they already messed up on getting a Salah from the 49ers because Salah's going to the Jets. So it's like... Is it bad that I kind of saw that coming, though? I didn't say we're going to the Jets. I just knew he was going to go to a team. I know he wasn't going to the Lions. Yeah. Because remember, remember I told you when they fired uh, Bob Quinn, I was like, they're going to find a, find a way to mess this up some type of way. They are. It's Detroit. They're going to find a way. It's sad to say, but the Forest need to let the franchise go. They do. They just have too much. I mean, the Lions is like this much money in their whole portfolio. Mm-hmm. So it's like, just get rid of it. You just want a Super Bowl so bad that you want to deprive us 20-year-olds a chance of looking at a Super Bowl. You got to wait till our 60s until we see a Super Bowl in Detroit. It's going to be horrible. Speaking of money, uh, President-elect Joe Biden unveiled his $1.9 trillion COVID relief plan. Are there stimulus checks in it? Of course. You can get, we're going to get up to fourteen hundred. dollars or we're gonna get another two thousand dollar direct paycheck. That also Slow comes, cut, yeah. that also comes cut, with yeah. uh, four hundred dollars a week in unemployment insurance through September two thousand twenty-one, and thirty billion dollars of rental assistance, and it's gonna raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour. Immediately. Immediately. That means that is if it goes through. It's probably going to go through. It probably will go through because of the House and the Senate. They're both Democratic, but majority Democratic, I mean. Um, I mean, I mean, they can make dollars for you. I really want to get them $15 an hour. I don't want it. I don't. I really don't. But they deserve it. <laughs> huh? They deserve it. However, if you get if you put mayonnaise no, on my sandwich one more time. Hold on, hold on. If you put the if you put the cheese to the left of my sandwich and not centered in the middle, one more time. I don't think you deserve fifteen dollars if that happens. Martin Luther King didn't have a dream for this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dream, God damn it! <laughs> that one day my burger will be created equal on the equal side of my meat. I have a dream <laughs> that the Wendy's at Southfield and Grand River actually gives me the right order this time. I have a dream that all the Taco Bells in Detroit will improve. (laughs) I have a dream that Taco Bell in the hood has taco shells. (laughs) I have a dream that church's chicken will no longer be greasy. (laughs) Oh, I have a dream. This episode of the Criss Cross Corner has been brought to you by Manscaped. Have you ever nicked your balls while shaving your hair? Hurts like hell, doesn't it? With Manscaped, there will be no more snags and cuts on these nuts. When you use the right tools on your family jewels, your balls will look and smell much better. Get your balls Manscaped, because that's what gentlemen do. I have the Lump More 3.0, which is their main trimmer, their Crop Preserver, which is their ball deodorant, and their Crop Reviver, which is their ball toner, which make my balls look good if I do say so myself. Guys, if you manscape with manscape, your man area will look so much better to you and your significant other. We have everything at Manscaped, including things that will give your significant other that face of amusement and excitement when you release the dragon. 
Not that look of disgust when you don't do it. Nobody likes a bush. Come on now. Come on, guys. It's not rocket science. Go to manscaped.com and get your manscaping tools. If you trim your hair down there with Manscaped, your balls will thank you. Now let's get back to the show. Speaking of greasy foods and executions, um, the U.S. executes <laughs> Dustin Higgs is the 13th and final execution of the Trump administration. No other president has killed many, as much people as Donald Trump because Donald Trump is this huge, like I think it's capital punishment, death penalty uh, advocate. So he killed the most people under his administration or shall I say regime. Do they all deserve to die? Not deserve. I like, would say they deserve to die. However, because you know, no one deserves to die. Like, but is it justified? I I didn't really look into the case of Dustin Higgs, but some people's right. cases are like, did they deserve the death penalty, or did they deserve, you know, like, a sentence with parole, with the option of parole? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't know. That is a question I put on the uh, Facebook group. I said, would you prefer life in prison or death? Bruh. No, my fiance made me mad with that question. I didn't even comment. I was about to say something. I saw what she said, and then she asked you, it and she gonna say it depends. I'm like, it does depend. It depends. I'm like, However, I'm like, do you want life in prison or, <laughs> or bruh, death? I saw what you said. And I'm just like, mm. it's a <laughs> it's a hard question. question. It's a hard question for most. Life in prison or death? Yeah. I'm against. The, I'm not against the death penalty, but I don't think that the death penalty should be used for everything. Because I'm against the death penalty completely. Because, like, if you murder somebody, if it depends on the murder, like, hey, death injects lethal injection, let them go. But if it's like some like ridiculous like treason or okay, because like, if it's like Charles Manson or child molestation, that doesn't or, warrant death. You didn't Ch kill the like baby. Charles, like Charles Manson, Charles Manson, if you give him the death penalty, I get it. Yo, yeah. But a child molester, that. a child molester, mm, I wouldn't say death penalty. Life in prison, definitely. Think about what you did, yeah. Mother Cracker Jack. <laughs> but it's still weird. But we live in a country where a child molester gets less time than a drug dealer. So, right. Nothing surprises me anymore. No, yeah. Nothing does surprise me. The justice system has to change in America. Mm hmm. And hopefully with this new uh, administration, things will change. Hopefully. Yeah, Kamala's hopefully. in there. But Kamala's in there, so she she used to locking niggas up. Um, anyway. Yeah, that is true. But that's what the law was back then, so we can't blame her. Anyway, speaking of changes, the new contagious coronavirus variant is going to change the world in 2021. We thought it was over. Did However, we, though? Did we, though? However, we was like, hey, we about to get out of here by fall of 2020. Then we pushed it back to 2021. Now we have variants of the damn virus. I mean, to be fair, we have variants of the flu. So True. you should have knew, knew that this was going to come. Like, I told, I told y'all back in April this was going to happen. Right, like, we have variants of the flu. So, of course, you're going to get variants of the coronavirus. Like, to me, people are panicking, but I'm like, this is normal. Like, this is... That's what happens anytime there's a new virus. It, it comes with different variants because you got to think about it. If animals can catch it, any disease that, that animals and humans can catch, if it's in an animal, it's still a different variant than a disease that's in the human. Yeah, it's true. So I thought it would be common sense, but you know, we live in America where that doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist. And people are still partying and breathing on people. So They're having COVID parties at college campuses. Yeah, which doesn't make any sense. Speaking On a of college, college campus. Campuses, speaking of college campuses, the University of Michigan. Here's one for you. You will be on, I think was it academic probation or just regular probation if you have a gathering of three or more people. They put you on probation. Okay. That's, to me, that's- That's a little know, harsh. That's a little extreme. That's extreme. So if I'm gathering, that's me, my roommate, and, that and your me, girl, my roommate and a family member, or my no. me, my roommate, and my girlfriend. Right. And if we gather together, and then on top of that, 
if you stay on the University of Michigan's campus, you it is a requirement to get tested weekly. If you miss a test, then you probably end up on probation too. I can understand that. But three people? Like, it's college. You're going to have three people, at least three people in a setting. You know what I mean? Right. But you got to understand, too, like, college kids, they got a lot going on. So, like, I feel like, let's say, for example, you get tested every week on Wednesday, right? Yeah. So if I miss my Wednesday testing, you go automatically throw me on probation when I can just go on Thursday. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's... I don't think they can put you on probation for missing a test, but I mean, hey. That's a little out of pocket. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of out of pocket, we're going to move to our next segment, our new segment of the show. Things <laughs> they don't teach you in school. Finally. <laughs> Things they do not teach you in school. Now, push it for this segment. Mark thinks he's, a lot, he's smart. No, I do not. Mark thinks he's real smart. I'm an idiot. He is an idiot, everybody. I'm going to prove it to You're you right now. Idiot. I'm going to prove it to you right now. Okay. All right, so the first one, the most popular activity in bed is sleeping. Everybody knows that. What is the second most popular activity in bed? Um, <laughs> it's gonna be between one or two things, being on your phone or sex. Sex is number three. Okay. Number two, second place of the most popular activity in bed is reading. <laughs> Nobody would think of that. Nobody but would think that. No, but being on your phone, technically that could count as reading, though. No, because if you're on your phone, you could be playing games or watching a movie. Have you ever, have you ever, you never read a book on your phone before? No. I have. I mean, I have well, read a book on my phone, but it wasn't in bed. An iPad. Well, I used to do that because I used to do my homework in bed sometimes. So just sit there, do homework, then read a book. Homework. I miss those days, but I don't. <laughs> Study sessions. Right. Quote unquote. Uh what per speaking of that, speaking of that, what percentage of men propose on one knee? Um, I'm gonna say sixty-four percent. That's high. That's, high, that's too high? Very high. Actually, okay. only 20% of men propose on one knee. I guess I'm part of that 20% then. The, uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the other 80% are like, we ain't getting no younger. We might as well do it. <laughs> Let's get married. I, I did it on one knee when Chris saw my video. I saw it. I was like, he is not getting up. <laughs> getting on one knee. <laughs> We got bad knees. We at that age now, Chris. We got bad knees. No, you at that age. Because <laughs> I, 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 I'm good. I was like, don't do it. Don't get on one knee. Oh, apartment shook. I'm playing. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Oh. Who earns more on average, brunettes or blondes? That's a uh, blondes. Nope, brunettes. Brunette. I was gonna say brunettes the first time. I was like, no, that's probably a trick question. <laughs> yep. Overthinking myself again. Yeah. Uh, a man well, inherits. Blondes are, are dumb. I'm, I didn't think about. This. No, it doesn't mean <laughs> don't get paid more. That's just that's a stereotype. Don't 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 don't. This, these are the words of Mark Simpson. These are not blondes the words of Chris. Dumb. All right, a uh, a man inherits his baldness from uh, which side of the family, the mother or the father? That'd be father. Nope, he gets his baldness. How? From the how? Okay, explain that. He gets his baldness from the maternal side of the family. I never, I don't understand that one. Genes. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm a good shape. I'm a good shape then. Yeah, since we're on the topic of uh genes and sex, uh how long is the human rectum, Mark? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> well, according to scientists, <laughs> it is 4.7 inches long. All right. So whenever she says, "Don't," it's too big, 4.7 inches. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember. <laughs> That is if you're into anal sex. But anyway, what is the most common day to have sex? Valentine's Day? No, no, but the, the common day of the week out of the seven days. <laughs> There's a big part of me that wants to say Wednesday, but. Um... <laughs> no, it's just because it's hump day. Doesn't I mean know, that's why, that's what, look, look, you already knew where I was going. <laughs> I know. I know where you were, where you were going. It's Friday, actually, Saturday. it's actually Sunday. Sunday. Of course it is. It's a day of rest. The Lord's Day. Mm-hmm. Y'all yeah. nasty. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know a lot of men saying Lord, Lord all day that day. But anyway, you said what? There's a whole bunch of men saying Lord, Lord that day. Lord? <laughs> Lord. That oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Let's go to the topic <laughs> of the day. But before we get to okay. the topic of the day, let's uh, talk about the Narrow Way Cafe on Livernois. Shout out these black owned businesses. Mm, 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 mm. Some good coffee. Get a large coffee when you go there. All right. Don't get a small coffee. Get that large. If you get that small, you're going to want more anyway. So you're going to go back and get another small. And now you didn't pay double the price of a large. Right. And you know Come they will. Now. They'll charge you too. They'll be like, hmm, he coming back, ain't he? No refills. <laughs> no refills. You need to pay that $3. All right. Go to Narrow Way Cafe, 19331 Livinois Avenue, or go to www.thenarrowwaycafe.com. Also, the Ladon Collection is open right now in Royal Oak. Black owned business in Royal Oak. Ladon. Ladon, 508 South Washington in Royal Oak. Or go to his Instagram at Ladon Collection. Check him out. He's open from 11 to 7. Please support this black owned business. All right. It's MBOK Day. It is. And we just want to talk about his impact on our lives and the country's <sighs> lives as well. We just saw what happened two weeks ago in uh, DC with the Trump supporters. And a lot of people were talking about if they were black, it'll be a whole different story. And I believe- You have a dream for this shit. I believe that if we went down there, me and you, Mark, along with our brothers and sisters, went Oof. from the White House or the Capitol, more so the White House, the White House we'd be dead anyway, but the Capitol? <laughs> It, anybody would be dead at the White House. It don't matter if you're black or white. They're just going to shoot you on sight. Right. But the Capitol, <laughs> like, them steps will be red. And a lot of people said that on Instagram and Facebook. I'm like, that is true. Very much true. That is very true. And Martin Luther King, they have, like, a, a memorial for him also on the mall. So he'd be looking at D.C. like this. Like, these niggas. That's how it's great. Man, turned over now his back facing you. Right. He done turned <laughs> over if he saw what happened two weeks ago. Him and Coretta. <laughs> Coretta, Coretta out here watching y'all doing the busted challenge. Like, he ain't die for this shit. <laughs> right. A lot of people doing the busted challenge wrong, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> She'd be like, I think my bucket big. She goes, she bends down on the right and then comes back up on the left. Hold up now. This is not the right way to do the busted challenge. Bridges. Chris got a grievance. I do. Because I'd be like, you're not doing it right. And then the girls get mad. I was like, just redo the hey, video. Hey, hey. <laughs> Dr. King, Dr. King, Dr. King. Your ass is nice, but <laughs> redo the video. <laughs> you're not coming up on the right side. <laughs> you ain't have a dream for this shit. <laughs> I did. But anyway. That's going to be that's gonna be the new slogan. He ain't have a dream for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> This episode of the Crisscross Corner has been brought to you by Crisscross Studios. Subscribe to the Crisscross Studios YouTube channel to get live content from the great debaters, Chris and Chris, the only Amigos, and the Guess That Song Challenge. 
Join the Criss Cross Corner podcast group on Facebook to request topics for us to discuss live on the show. You also get to request topics from my top 10 list every week. Your list might make the cut for the episode. Support the podcast on Patreon for $5 a month or $10 a month for all Criss Cross Studios content. Just go to patreon.com slash crisscrosscorner313 or get the Patreon app and type in Criss Cross Corner. Support the podcast on Anchor for $4.99 a month at anchor.fm slash crisscrosscorner slash support. There will be new podcast episodes every week on podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Breaker, Overcast, and iHeartRadio. Again, please subscribe to the Criss Cross Studios YouTube channel and f- support Criss Cross Studios. Now let's get back to the show. You see the lady that fell off? Yeah, I saw that. She was like, ah! I was like, ah, that's what you get. <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about some facts about Martin Luther King that you might have not known. Mm. He was the youngest person at the time to receive a Nobel Peace Prize at 35 yes. years old. He was arrested 29 times. Wow. And assaulted four times. He is the only non president to have a national holiday in his name. AKA Martin Luther King Day. <laughs> he has 20 honorary degrees, which I don't even know what they're in, but he has 20 of them. I can barely get two, and I still got to pay for them bitches. Bro, stop comparing your degrees to Dr. King's, bro. <laughs> I can compare my degrees to Martin Luther King. Stop doing that, dog. He did this, he did this piece so I can get my two degrees, so. <laughs> I'm like, shoot. <laughs> he has 900 degrees, 900, I'm, almost, I'm still on degrees. He has 900 streets named after him. And ain't nothing going good on them streets. <laughs> you go to MLK downtown in Detroit, ain't nothing good on MLK Boulevard. Come on now. You can't find a nice thing on MLK. If you can't find a nice thing on MLK, put it in the comment section below. Detroit is the only place where you got a, a school in the street named after one person. Hey man, you, you got a school in the street named after you. I forgot. I forgot about that King King High School. Ain't that mm-hmm. bad, bitch? It's called Martin Luther King Junior High School. So it sounds like a junior high school, but it's a senior high. No, it's called Martin Luther King Junior Senior High School. That's a long name. Martin Luther King Junior Senior Junior Senior. That is confused somebody. That, I walk. I was driving past. I was like, "Junior C, Junior C, Junior C," and I almost crashed because I was trying to figure it out. I was crashing to that uh, Little Caesars that's right there, right there. I'm like, "Wait a minute, Junior C, Junior." You lost in your own head. I was lost in my own head that day. Uh, here's irony. His mother, his mother was uh, murdered by a gunman. That's crazy. Did not know that. I did not know that either. Here's another thing I didn't know. He skipped high school, went straight to Morehouse College at 15 years old. Wow. And then became a minister at 19 after he graduated. All right, Chris, that's your calling. No, it's not. All the other good jobs were taken. That's why he became a minister. <laughs> right? I did not know this either. He has a Grammy. Did you know this? You said he was? He, he has a Grammy. A Grammy? Yeah. When did he win a Grammy? He has uh, the Best Spoken Word Album Award. Wow. Why I Opposed the War in Vietnam. 
won the spell the best spoken word album in 1971. Oh wow. So shout outs to MLK. Yeah, here getting Grammys. Uh, and also we talked about the Selma to Montgomery walk slash march where we saw the movie Selma. I, at least I hope we all saw the movie Selma. We almost lost Mark. I can tell you what, we almost lost Martin Luther King before 68. Um, yep. Remember when the guy ran up to him and stabbed him? Yep. And he had a knife stuck in him. They said if he would have took one deep breath during surgery, he would have been dead. Yeah. Jeez. I was like, that was like wow. Like imagine, like he said, if you would have took a breath, because you know it would his how your body expands when you breathe mm-hmm. heavy. The knife would have pierced a lung or a pierced. I think it was a lung or artery or something. They said it would have pierced it and he would have been dead. Jeez. Was like wow. The God was on your side, sir. Yes, he was. <laughs> Praise him. He knew what you was about to do. Yes. He said like, he needs to say the speech in Washington. He can't die now. Yeah, of course he died. I think it was in Memphis. Yep, know, April, in Memphis. April of 1968. The hotel is a museum now. Yep. It's also ironic that he died the day after the release of uh, uh, Planet of the Apes. Wow. That's, that, that raises a few eyebrows. Even though we See, know. the government is always... We ain't gonna get into that. I'm gonna let that go. Yeah, we ain't gonna talk about the government right now on the podcast. <laughs> Cause I got some theories. I got some theories. Oh yes. That we will talk about later. We'll talk about those on another episode. <laughs> <laughs> but uh let's uh talk about this top ten list for the week. And okay, well, we got- I did this top ten list l- this week. I was thinking about movies that I saw where I saw racism happen and I felt like I needed to do something about it. Ooh. Just like Martin Luther King. My, our friend Martin. No, I'm just playing. Good Lord. Is that on the list? No. <laughs> when you said that, I'm like, good Lord, I forgot about the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, please don't say it. <laughs> but uh, the gunshot still gets me. He was like, I'm gonna go back and save Martin. Oh. Oh, damn. There's a, a little tear coming down my cheek. All right. <laughs> it's even worse, when, it's even worse when you know the whole story. You'd be like, damn. right. <laughs> when the house got blew up and they found that bomb. Yeah. I was like, dog. Come on, dog. They, they can't leave this nigga alone. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, these are the uh, top 10 movies that evoke feelings of racism. Mm hmm. It makes you want to do something about it. So in this list, if you haven't watched these movies, please watch them and tell us how you feel about them in the comment section below. Yeah. Honorable mentions. I just saw this movie a few months ago. LA 92 on Netflix. What's it called? LA 92. They didn't see that one, so I'm going to keep it up. I know today. Uh, it's about um, LA in 1992. And we all know what happened okay. in April of 1992. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Never mind. We all know what happened. I know what happened. Rodney King. I don't even want to go there. As well as a lot of other things that happened in 1992 in LA at the time. So yeah, a lot of, if, I didn't know like all the stuff culminated in all that, but I did. Mm-hmm. I didn't know all the other stuff like in LA, not like like countrywide, but it right. led to all that. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And it repeated itself in 2015 with Ferguson in Minneapolis. <laughs> or Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin and everything. It's the same thing. Just know your history. I still can't eat, I still can't eat Skittles the same no more. Nope, me neither. Every time I look at Skittles, I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do it. It's crazy that we think that and people think we're okay. And that's why I make this list. Next on my list is I Am Not Your Negro. I saw that. Also a really good movie. We have Do the Right Thing, Spike Lee movie. Mm-hmm. 12 Years a Slave. I 
can't watch that movie no more. Yeah, it's just a sad movie. Like, I don't want to put my heart through that again. That was. It's a lot. <laughs> Before I ask, uh, was that is that movie with Janelle, with, with Janelle Monae on your list? I forgot what it was called. Um, when she got uh, kidnapped and turned into a, the slave plantation. Oh, what was it called? I don't think it's on here. I don't think that. If I have if Bill Street could talk, Twelve Years a Slave. I have Loving, which is Loving versus Virginia, a uh, multiracial marriage show. I've uh, heard of that one. My mom watched that one. That was pretty good. The Help. Yo, that. Mm-mm-mm. The help? Eat that shit, pop. <laughs> we have Moonlight. That was weird for me at first, like when I first watched it. I had to watch it a second time so I can get the, you know. Yeah, get the gist of it. Mm-hmm. We also have Hidden Figures in my honorable mentions. That's one of my favorite movies, actually. I never hated Sheldon from Big Bang Theory as much as I hated him in that movie. He came around at the end, though. Sheldon and Kristen Dunst. <laughs> Kristen Dunst Kristen was Dunst like was an asshole. Bro. She was the she was biggest a... asshole. I was like, damn, Mary Jane. <laughs> I think it was Mary Jane from Spider Man. So when I see her like yeah. that, I'm like, damn, you was a whole ho. <laughs> Yo, it was mean to them too. I was like, dang, this is racism. I need to stop. I thought it. you was good. I thought you was cool. <laughs> Okay, Antebellum is the name of the movie I'm talking about. Oh, Antebellum. No, I, just, I haven't watched, I haven't seen that movie yet. Isn't that, that, that's the horror film, like, right? It, I wouldn't call it a horror film. Like a suspense film? So, yeah, it's a suspense. So, basically, she was a, she's a news anchor. She got kidnapped. And when she got kidnapped, the way the movie made it seem like that, she got basically put back in time into the slave days. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna tell you what happened to that because I can't tell you what literally what happened that without telling you the movie. Like I I'll, I'll watch it when we get off. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you what happens without telling you the movie, but you need that's a movie you, I feel like you need to see. Okay, I'll watch it. All right, we're gonna do our top ten list. All right. This is number ten. We have When They See Us. Oh yeah. The Brooklyn, the Central Park Five. Mm-hmm. What's that Brooklyn? It's Central Park Five. Different borough. Uh, number nine, Fruitvale Station. Yep, see? Okay. See, I got you. You was like, <laughs> telling you. <laughs> it's these movies that evoke emotion about racism. That movie triggers me so much, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you. Chad Michael Murray will never be the same. <laughs> I was thinking of him as uh, Lucas on uh, One Tree Hill. Oh my God. I was like, this man killed him. You can't Michael P. Jordan. For what? Like, <laughs> I did. Play the, it's an accident. I did it on accident. No, you did not. <laughs> All right, number eight, we have Pride. Mm-hmm. The swimming movie with uh, Terrence Howard and Bernie Mac. Oh, my God. They had to go to the white schools, and the white schools were like, uh, we're not swimming with these guys. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> what? You're not swimming with the black people. <laughs> Then when the white people went to the black people place, they were like, we don't want to swim here. Yeah, y'all need to come out to the white people place. I'm like, yo, this is racism to the highest. Exactly. Seven, Malcolm X. All right, you triggering me. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. (laughs) Plymouth Rock landed on us. (laughs) Greatest quote ever. Number six, Just Mercy. Another Michael B. Jordan. I saw that all the way through for the first time, I think last month. That's with Jamie Foxx too, right? Yep. Okay, I now I remember it. That was pretty now, good. Cringe. That was last year. It was cringe. Watching Jamie Foxx like that was cringe, but... Anything with Jamie Foxx is cringe. If it's not comedy. Like watching him play Electro on Spider-Man. Oh yeah, that was cringe. <laughs> don't, don't. Let's not go back to that. <laughs> Let's not. All right, we have number five, Glory Road. All the racism they had to go through. Still a great movie. Disney knows how to get your feelings. (laughs) 
They also got our feelings with number four. Remember the Titans. Oh, man. Got some stuff no. in that movie. I remember my coach made us watch that, and then we had to go play a game in Saginaw. Yo. <laughs> I was so bad, bro. It's like... We had to go play a game in Saginaw. We looked at him like, "We go, we go to watch this movie. We gonna drive all the way up to Saginaw." <laughs> what? Mm-mm-mm. So the first time we stepped on the field, Vegas. What? And we couldn't tell. We couldn't tell if the black player said it or the white player said it. So we just like, <laughs> "Oh, we mad now." <laughs> Assume the position. Ready, set, hike. Right. <laughs> We just assumed it was the white player. <laughs> we got number three, The Hate You Give. That was a triggering movie. That was a triggering movie, Mark. Exactly. You're triggered right now. I can't do this, bro. <laughs> we, have two, we have two more. We have two more. I can't do this, bro. <laughs> We have number two, we have Selma. The newer one or the older one? The new one went in uh, 2014. Because uh, you got that, then you got the movie Selma, Lord Selma. Remember yeah. Selma, Lord Selma, when it was on yeah. that bus? and it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Triggering. <laughs> mm -hmm. Number one, I think everybody should watch, not just black people or white people who think they're woke. Uh, 13th. Yo. To actually understand our frustrations of what's going on. Why we were angry at what happened on Capitol Hill on Wednesday, January 6th. Why we are angry around election season. Why we don't care. You know what you should have had on here? I know, I know it's not racism towards black people, but uh, Bright with Will Smith. Bright with Will Smith was a good movie. That was a, that was it. a message. It was a weird movie, but it was a good message. It was an underlying message yeah. to the whole movie. I only watched it like three times. I watched it. Yeah, I had to watch it three times to get it. And Will Smith was the racist. Mm-hmm. Like, like, people think, oh, he a black man. He can't be racist. Then they watch that movie and be like, damn. <laughs> Yeah, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never seen Will Smith like this. <laughs> nope. Yo, when Will Smith started doing roles like that, that's when people was like, okay, he kind of like not being what he used to be. But I like it. All right. Do you like old Will Smith or new Will Smith? I like both, to be honest. Which one do you like more? I feel like old Will Smith did more exciting things, though. Okay. Like, you won't see the new Will Smith doing another Independence Day. Yeah, I don't see him doing another Independence Day either. He turned the other one down. They just killed him off. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, all right, what's not going to be in this one? First scene. Oh, I'm sorry that your dad died. I'm like, what? Damn! You <laughs> then you're going to get the same child actor to think he going to... Mm-mm. It's crazy. But those are my yeah. ten, my top ten movies that evoke feelings of racism and makes you want to yeah. do something about it. I got a new top ten list for next week. What you got? Black actors. Black actors. Okay. I got black actors. I'm gonna get a few like powerful, powerful, yeah. Like powerful black ones actors. or like random ones? Because I can get a powerful. Random powerful. Ones. Okay, powerful black actors. All right. Top 10 powerful black actors coming to you live next week on what's <laughs> next week? January 26th. So this is male and female. No, I, I thought it, I, oh, you, I thought you said black actors. So I said, I thought I meant male. I mean, because when it's a group and it's male and women, they usually just say actors. Okay. I'll say actresses. Okay. I got you. I'll do, I'll do five and five. Uh, unless you want to do unless you want to do one for male, then the week after do women. I'll do five and five. Okay. I already it, know who you it gives me, first. It gives me it gives me more time to think and actually research. 
I know who you put on there first. Who? Viola. <laughs> Viola Davis. I guess. I put her Fences. On. Fences was great. Fences was okay. I wouldn't give it. I would. I would. I, it was okay movie to me. I come on her acting in Fences. Then look at what she had to go through. Yeah. What's the other movie she was in? She was I, I, the other thing I remember her from though was um uh, she was in uh, what's that movie where they all their husbands? Yeah, that's what I was trying to find. Which one? The husbands died, and then she was like the one that was yeah. like. I was like, damn. And then uh, she did, of course, How to Get Away with Murder. Yeah. And then she was briefly in a Suicide Squad, which we're not going to speak about. And that has been another edition of the Chris <laughs> Quest Corner. Please subscribe to the podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Join the Chris Cross Corner Facebook group to watch the live show. Leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and other podcast platforms. Tell your friends and family about the podcast. Mm-hmm. Stay safe. And just- Social distance. And be nice to each other. Mm-hmm.